I worked for about half a dozen advertising agencies. Um, got to a reasonably, you know, senior position for uh, someone so young in my uh, early twenties. And one of the, the accounts I worked on was EMI in the um, in the mid seventies, and. Um, I was, um, I was invited by the legendary Bob Mercer, who was managing director of EMI at the time, um, who also had a, not, not a record company background, but a FMCG background, fast moving consumer goods, still known as, um, to come in and set up the TV division for EMI because they'd seen, um, uh, while he was there, um, the history was companies like Ktel and Ronco um, coming in and licensing all this product from the major record companies who didn't really have the know-how or the guts to go and do the same thing and all it was is getting you know extending their distribution into um, supermarkets which were growing at the time. Um, Ktel and Ronco and these other companies had a lot of success and Bob wanted some of that but there was nobody with it, that skill set uh, within EMI and I came in and I had a fantastic four years there. I mean you know in the 70s, the 60s were very much the uh, the embryonic years, I think, in the music business and the record companies. The 70s were very interesting. Um, 60s nostalgia, 70s was such a diverse amount of uh, repertoire. I mean, people look back at the 70s in music-wise in a more difficult way in terms of nostalgia than they do for the 80s and the 60s because the 70s was so diverse. It started off with prog rock then it went into glam rock, then it went into punk, and then it went into disco. It was all over the place. And, you know, and for me, getting into um, TV concept marketing, uh, that, you know, although we started off with a major success, which is a single artist uh, project, which is the Beach Boys, and a lot of the early ones were. We had things like the Beach Boys, the 20 Golden Greats series, The Shadows, Glenn Campbell, Nat King Cole. Um, but I remember um, doing what, it, what would have been the first disco compilation which um, some people, if they're sad enough, actually bought a copy, I bump into them. And that was called Don't Walk Boogie, um, which was, uh, again, uh, we, we used an advertising agency uh, at the top of their class at the time, CDP, um, and um, they came up with some great creative concepts. I mean, the product was pretty good, but you had to sell it. Um, and that was how I sort of got involved in, in the, you know, from advertising into, into EMI.